Today we are going to assemble the UC Tronics Ultimate Raspberry Pi rack mount, featuring a PoE hat for the Raspberry Pis and all front panel connections, including the SD card, power button, and an OLED display. Welcome back to Ben's Tech Lab. This video is pretty exciting for a few reasons. First of all, this might just be the most ultimate Raspberry Pi rack mount available on the market today. But also, for a newbie YouTuber like me, this is my first sponsored video. Yeah! UC Tronics was kind enough to send this unit out to me for this project, and I appreciate their support of a small channel like mine with only a few hundred subs. All right, let's start from the beginning. My unit was shipped directly from UC Tronics, but you can get this on Amazon, especially if you're in the States. However, it's not on all the international Amazons. So the link I leave in the description below will go to both Amazon or to the UC Tronics website, depending on where you are in the world. It's pretty nicely packaged here. We've got, uh, it's kind of, taped up with plastic all the way around so that water or anything like that wouldn't get into the package. All right, so the part number here is U6145, rack mount 1U, 19 inch PoE version for Raspberry Pi 4B. We've got four little individual boxes in here, which is going to be the kits, I'm sure, and the bracket itself, and a small instruction book. Of course, this is the most interesting piece. There's the rack mount itself. There's the OLED displays already mounted on the 1U bracket here. So we got a little manual here. Pretty straightforward, just basically shows you the uh, screws and how you hook everything up. All right, let's open up some of the smaller boxes. So in the smallest box here, looks like we've got some of the screws and fasteners and the power buttons. So we've got our power buttons there, that's good. Next box here, these are the front panel IO relocation plates. Uh, so they get the HDMI to the front of the rack mount. And then one more here, we've got some PoE hats. And this is gonna be more PoE hats. All right, let's do some fun assembly stuff here. So according to their manual, uh, they suggest the OLED displays first, which have come pre-assembled uh, on my version at least. Not sure if they all do or not. And then uh, second, it suggests to put the power buttons. And then third, it says assemble the HDMI adapter and PoE hat. All right, here's one of the power buttons. You can see that there's a little picture of the power symbol on the front of the button. Uh, they do mount in this orientation on the front panel. There is a little bit of a notch on the side of it to make sure they go in that orientation. There we go. So we've got our power buttons all mounted up here and we're ready to start assembling one of the pies. So uh, I've got a standard Raspberry Pi 4B here and um, I'm gonna put three of them on right now. One of them is in use as my uh, companion Pi that I built in the previous video. So I'll move that one over off scene cause it's currently uh, running the companion app for this recording. So I'm gonna start on position number two here and put this guy right in here. So the PoE hats have a couple of connectors that will sit on the Raspberry Pi. They have a nice little tiny fan on there to help keep it cool and uh, the obvious components. All right, this kit does come with these little stick on heat sinks for your Raspberry Pi. So you can stick that on the main processor. So the first thing that the instructions say to do is to put on the PoE hat with these little uh, standoffs. The standoffs go with the female side facing down to the Raspberry Pi and the male side sticking through the PoE hat. 
All right, so the IO board just uh, goes in the two HDMI ports on the side to bring those to the front, if that's what you're looking for. There we go. So I've first screwed down the uh, front plate or the IO relocation board and now I'm going to try to screw down the Raspberry Pi. Putting the black screw in from the bottom. There we go, standoffs are on. Now we're gonna switch back to the nut driver and try to get a nut on these standoffs. Tiny little nuts are quite hard to uh, get on. All right, so we've got the first Raspberry Pi mounted up and now we could just hook up the connectors. So there are they are clearly labeled here and have a different pin count. So the OLED display goes right over here on the board and the power switch goes right over here. All right, there's one Raspberry Pi mounted up. We've got the power switch attached and the OLED display attached to the PoE hat, which has uh, everything in there. And then the IO relocation plate. The last thing left to do is to add the SD card uh, relocation cable. There we go. There's the SD card relocation kit. Kit. Uh, this little guy sticks in the SD card slot on the bottom and relocates it up here so that it is now available on the front of your rack mount. That'll make it much easier for swapping out different Raspberry Pi images if you're an experimenter and you want to try a few different configs and apps and whatnot. All right, so we've got one of the Raspberry Pis assembled in the rack bracket here. And now that I've done one of them, I know all of the little mistakes and gotchas that you might not notice when you first get it out of the box. Namely, it's just the order of operations. It seems to be much easier to just set the standoffs in on the Raspberry Pi hat, uh, but not screw it in anywhere, get it into place, screw it from the bottom, and then add the nut on top. So let's add a couple of more Raspberry Pis. All right, this might be obvious, but uh, the relocation board that allows the HDMI to be front panel mounted is an optional add-on, so you can omit it if you don't wanna use it. I think the idea is that if you have a big rack full of Raspberry Pis, most of them will be running in a headless mode, meaning you have no keyboard, mouse, or monitor attached to them when you're using them. However, you can quickly attach a keyboard, mouse, and monitor whenever you just need to debug that particular Raspberry Pi. In my case, I am going to leave the next two Raspberry Pis without the HDMI relocated so that I can use HDMI out the rear of the rack. All right, so you can see here that on my right two uh, Raspberry Pis, I've got these micro HDMI right angle cables that are gonna go to my ATEM Mini, which is my uh, video streaming and recording box. And this guy here has the HDMI relocation board, which puts the HDMI to the front of the plate. All right, I'm gonna add the fourth Raspberry Pi off camera because it's currently running software that I use to control my uh, recording environment. So uh, you'll magically see that pop into place somewhere along the way on this video. But for now, let's get this thing mounted up uh, in my rack. All right, there we go. We've got it uh, on the rack. This rack, by the way, is just a little desktop one. Um, I'll link to it in the description below. You can get it in different heights, including a smaller version that's only 4U high, uh, 8U high, and then 12U high. So if you're looking for something to hold your equipment on your desk, this is a nice little way to go. I also added this patch panel here. These take regular keystone uh, patch uh, inputs. And so I'm going to run the networks through here, through the patch panel, and to a hidden switch on the back side of this rack. Um, you could, of course, use a 1U rack mount switch if you like, but I'm just gonna use a really cheap little TP-Link SG-1008 PoE switch to power these up. 
Okay, one quick compatibility note here. The UC Tronics PoE hat for the Raspberry Pis uh, that comes with this kit does not support CAT7 cables. CAT7 cables can be recognized from this metal shielding on the side of the connector rather than plastic, and that causes some uh, issues specifically with PoE on these hats. It uh, doesn't matter anyways, the Raspberry Pis only have gigabit ethernet, they can't go to 10 gig. So uh, just your regular Cat 6A or below that has the clear plastic ends on it is going to work perfectly. All right, so I've got the Raspberry Pi rack mount all set up and the first Raspberry Pi is now running my BitFocus companion app that I set up in my previous video. I did disconnect the fan on the PoE hat because I wasn't using a fan with the Raspberry Pi to begin with. And the fans on this product are either on or off. There's no speed control. So you can either unplug it or plug it in and it's running 100% fan speed at all times. In my situation, I'm in a climate controlled environment and so I'm not too worried about it overheating, but that could be different depending on what applications you're running and what kind of environment you're running in. Overall, I really like this product. The number of features they fit into a 1U form factor is great, but there's a few things I'd like to see improved. Brass standoffs might make it a little easier to assemble, and I'd really like to see fan speed control built into their PoE hat. Hey, if you like this video, leave it a like down below. It helps me out quite a lot. And while you're down there, consider subscribing. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.